Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, okay, a quick confirmation before we proceed. Can people hear my voice? You can confirm that using a chat box, okay? Uh, there is a chat box available. So please quickly confirm me regarding the voice. Is the voice clear to all of you? And can you people see me? Is my video visible to all of you? That's great. And uh, okay, great. And also confirm me about uh, the screen. Can you see my screen as well? Can you see my screen as well? Right, great. That's perfect. So let's wait for a minute or so so that others can join as well. Uh, because it's the first day of this webinar and uh, yeah, people are still joining. So it's 7.08 right now. Okay, so let's wait for a minute or so so that others can join. So in, in a minute's time, I'll start again, okay? So be with me, stay connected. So, hello, welcome everybody. This is Rizwan Mania once again in front of you people for this very important performance management webinar for September 2021. Uh, I'm really excited, so I'm sure you all must be excited as well, right? Are you excited? Yes or no? Yes. Come on, I need answers in big numbers, okay? My sessions are the one where I really want people to be active and you need to participate with me every time so come on let's be active and let's make sure that this webinar will be a game changer for you people 
game changer in the sense that this webinar hopefully inshallah will ensure that you pass in september 2021 attempt right so that's great now there is there is a chat box given here so you can comment so i'll just quickly give you some instructions before we proceed so let's begin with our today's slide okay now first of all about the tutor about myself so i am into this acca teaching uh, since last more than 14 years uh, i teach people paper performance management financial management and advanced performance management have taught more than 6,000 students. Uh, I teach both physically in Pakistan uh, and to online uh, international students as well. Uh, I've conducted uh, lots of ACCA webinars and uh, I'm fortunate to say that uh, I've conducted six advanced performance management webinars for ACCA Pakistan, the same as I'm doing for PM. And along with that, uh, I've conducted performance management webinars, and this time, this is my eighth ACCA PM webinar. So, uh, obviously, a lot of experience in terms of teaching international students conducting the webinars, and I, I'm really happy uh, that many people, you know, after the result, they WhatsApp me and they say that they have passed because of the webinar. So it's a really nice, you know, feeling that, okay, uh, I helped someone, uh, and uh, they pass. So again, I would want you people to help me to help yourself to pass. Are you ready? Say yes. Okay, so how to remain connected after webinar? That's a very important question because my support is not just for these webinar days, okay? My support will be the till the last day uh, before the exam. If you have any friend who have taken my webinar or is part of my acca performance management global community the whatsapp groups i'm talking about so they you can ask from them that my support my revisions is till the last day so if you want to take benefit of all those revisions if you want support from me till the last day uh, so you have to be part of my whatsapp groups and for that i'm sharing this number with you people which you can see in front of your screen it's plus nine two three two one two four three six two double six you can whatsapp me right now uh, and i will then after the session will add you in the global performance management group okay so there are so many international students uh, so you can interact with them as well you can ask questions uh, with each other and i will always be there to supervise you people so if you are not part of my general whatsapp groups please just whatsapp me right now so that i can add you in the whatsapp group and make sure nobody leaves the group especially till the examination because this group will be a game changer for you okay so you can send me a whatsapp message plus admin uh, will also share the link of that whatsapp group uh, in in the chat box so you can even use that link as well now uh, how to remain connected with me during the webinar uh, in that case uh, what you need to do is that there is a chat box given uh, so you have to use this chat box every time for asking questions i am a person who want a very interactive session those who know me from my previous webinars i want people to engage with me i want people to respond i want people to be active i want you people to reply so please 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 make sure that you remain active during the webinar as well okay uh, the current group in which i will add you will be a latest group so i'm uh, so you will get the latest update so you should join this group for sure okay now after this then let's discuss the agenda for the first day from where i'm gonna start up the things okay so first of all i'll give you a quick introduction to performance management what a paper i would say after f2 this is a really really interesting paper and students you know they really enjoy if they understand the basics of the paper and they can pass very easily so i'll try my best to make it easy for you people 
So uh, after that, I'll share a two weeks plan with you people. Now, this is a very important plan, a two weeks plan I'll share with you people uh, that after the webinar, because our webinar will end at 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th. So we'll end the webinar on 20th. So after 20th, you'll be left with two weeks. So what to do? I will tell you what to do in the remaining two weeks. Scope of the webinar will be discussed with you people after that then today's study plan, then the million dollar plans, very famous globally. These, my, uh, these are the plans that I share with people and they really benefit from these. Then we have a question and answer session, last 10 minutes. Uh, I'll try my best to spare some time to ask questions uh, you so that you can uh, respond to the queries. Now, one thing I need to tell you here is that one thing I need to tell you here is that what you need to do is you people need to hold your questions until and unless I give you the opportunity. So what exactly you have to do, let me tell you. When I'm teaching a topic, so don't ask questions in between, okay? I will not look at the chat box at that time. So your question, your query may, you know, uh, get wasted. What you have to do is that once I'll end the topic or a concept or something like that, I myself will give you the chance to ask questions. So ask the questions only that time so that your query is not wasted, okay, in the chat box. So make sure that you ask questions when I give you the opportunity. Once I finish a topic or a question, I will ask you if you need to ask anything. So just note it down the query somewhere so that you do not forget that and you can ask me later on. Uh, other than this, last 10 minutes, definitely I'll have a session where you can ask further questions as well, okay? So there are two groups of students who are appearing in September 21 exam, okay? Uh, how many of you are uh, attempting for the first time? So I need quick replies in the chat box. I'm looking at the chat box. Uh, how many of you are giving for the first time? I'm asking for the first time. Come on, first timers. Just update me in the chat box. Okay, so there are really good numbers who are attempting for the first time. And for you, it's very important to understand a lot of things. So it's a very encouraging thing for me that many of you are appearing for the first time. This means you people will definitely learn a lot. And you will really learn a lot of new techniques because my emphasis is on techniques how to make things easier, simple for you people, okay? That's the, great. Now, uh, so many of you are attempting for the first time and obviously there will be many students who will be giving the paper uh, second time or maybe third time. So for both the groups of students, my uh, suggestion is first timers, be really active. You can't miss any webinar day, okay? And those who are giving re-attempt, you must learn from your mistakes. Now, I, I really, I'm really afraid of those who are giving re-attempt because they take things really casually, okay? Because when a topic starts, they say, okay, I'm really good in this topic. I don't need to uh, invest my time into this topic. That's wrong. That's really wrong. Listen, you don't know. There'll be a small technique or a tip that can help you to pass the paper. So don't take things for granted. Don't take things for granted. Make sure that you take the entire 15 hours because it's a really free opportunity, you know, that ACC has provided you. So why you are wasting this opportunity? So make sure that you are part of all the 15 uh, hours and five days of the webinar, okay? So both the groups will learn a lot. Make sure you all are with me till the end. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> Just, just make it more visible. Just open the window. Okay. After this, uh, now a quick question. SPM heart exam. Okay, let's see what responses I'm getting here. 
is PM hard exam? Oh, mixed answers. It's good to see that people are writing no, not at all. <laughs> okay. Just enlarge the screen. Uh, okay. So, PM is not a hard exam. PM is not a hard exam. Okay. Yes, this is true. This is true that PM requires you people to lift yourself. Okay. It requires you people to lift yourself. Right. That's what you need to understand that you need to lift yourself. You need to lift yourself in the sense that you have to match the level of this paper. Because if you will not match the level of the paper, then obviously you will not cope up with the required things that examiner wants you to do. So remember my friends, I will help you to step up here. I will help you to step up here because remember, you are no more a kid. Are you a kid? No. You are no more a kid. So if you are not a kid, you have to step up. It's not a management accounting paper. Very carefully listen what I'm saying. It's not a management accounting paper. It's a performance management exam. So you need to step up in two areas, right? Number one, I would say that the expectation of the examiner is totally different. It's not an F2 exam where you are required to uh, do the right calculations and you work out high low, uh, you work out the variable cost and the fixed cost by using high low method. It's not that, okay? It's a performance management paper where you have to always ask the question why, right? Always ask the question why. Now, if you've worked out a variance and that's adverse, so you ask a question why this is adverse. If you've worked out a variance and that's favorable, so ask yourself why is it favorable? So this is what you have to keep in your mind that ask yourself what the numbers mean. Now, let me write this. It's a, it's a really good thing. You need to keep in mind what the numbers mean okay in performance management you should know what the numbers mean and why uh, you have worked out a certain thing uh, because it's all about interpretation it's not about numbers it's not an f2 exam where you're just supposed to work out a, a variance or work out the fixed overhead or a variable overhead here, you need to know the meaning of what calculations you have done so far, right? Are you getting my point? So this is what you have to keep in your mind uh, whenever it comes to performance management. <clears throat> now, the expectation is totally different. That is what you need to keep in your mind. It's a total different expectation when it comes to performance management and interpretation. The focus should be on interpretations ratio interpretation variance interpretation as i said now what the numbers mean got it secondly the paper pattern is different it's a totally different paper how i'm saying paper pattern is different so i'll just quickly show you the exam as well uh, right now because th those who are the fresh ones though they need to have an idea what the paper look like it's not F2 exam where you have 50 questions there of 100 marks. This paper requires three expertise from you people. It requires three expertise from you people. Expertise in terms of section A, expertise for section B, and very good expertise for section C. The paper pattern is way too different compared to what you have uh, observed or experienced in F2 paper. Okay, so uh, before I show you the examination paper, this is the paper structure. So uh, I will not take much time, so don't worry. I know you people are already aware of all these stuff. This is just a quick beginning I'm doing, okay? Section A, uh, Section B, and Section C. Section A uh, includes 15 objective test questions, 15 OTs. 
uh, section A 15 OTs of two marks each. So that makes around 30 marks altogether. <laughs> I need to charge it. So <clears throat> you need to keep this in your mind that uh, 15 OTs of two marks each is what is important for you people in this case. Uh, second, section B. Section B is a one where there will be three case studies, okay? There'll be a scenario given to you people uh, with five OTs in each case study. So this comprises of 10 marks, okay? And uh, that makes 30 marks. We are already aware of that. Section C requires another group of skills, skills of typing, skills of formulas, skills of spreadsheet. So if you are still confused, Rizwan Mania will be with you people. Don't worry. I will make things really easy for you people. You need to trust me. And that's why you are here. And that's why ACCA gave me this opportunity to interact with you people. So yes, my friends, I will work on the small areas where students do a lot of mistakes. Okay, great. So uh, you can see here, these are the topic areas of your paper. Uh, uh that you are very much aware but the only important thing i need to tell you here is the advanced costing technique topics like abc target life cycle throughput and environmental management accounting these five topics of this section will not be tested in section c they will only be tested in section a and b and not for the CRQs, right? It's a three hour exam. Uh, and obviously for me, timing is really important. My focus is massively on the timing and on time management. So from day one, I need to tell you people that it's a, it's a three hour paper, which means you have 180 minutes in your examination to solve 100 marks, right? So a quick mathematic will tell me that it's basically 1.8 minutes per mark, okay? 1.8 minutes per mark is the benchmark that you have to keep in your mind. So my friends, if 1.8 minutes per mark is the benchmark that you have to keep in your mind, so what you need to do? So I'll tell you techniques specific to section A, how to handle section a keeping in mind 1.8 minutes per mark i'll tell you how to handle section b and i will tell you how to handle section e c as well uh, so this is what you have to keep in my mind in your mind that it's 1.8 minutes per mark right so let's hold it here let's see once we move towards the question that what importance this 1.8 minutes per mark exactly has okay the type of OTs that will be tested in your paper uh, for section A of your exam and section B of your exam uh, include seven types of OTs, okay? Multiple choice question, you know out of four, you need to select one. That's the best one, right? Sometimes you are able to guess as well, right, through this. Anyways, multiple response is the most dangerous when it comes to theoretical questions. Why? Because there will be no one answer. There could be two, there could be three, there could be four correct statements, which means that here you need to be very much thorough as to what exactly the right statements are. So here the conceptual understanding is really important. Fill in the blank, one of the dangerous questions when it comes to calculative questions, because it's a blank. It's a fill in the blank question where there is no options given, uh, no indications, just input your answer. Here I have seen a lot of you struggle when it comes to the decimal policies, one decimal, two decimal, what to take. You don't know what nearest thousand means nearest millions means and you do a mistake and you lose easy two marks okay so this is also one area you need to work on drag and drop you just drag an option and drop at a particular place uh drop down very much similar to mcq i would say sister of mcq uh 
uh, because you just have a button of drop down. You just click that and you get four options. You select one option, right? Then you have hotspot, uh, a graphical sort, sort of a question uh, where you m need to identify the right area, like identify the break even point or the profit area. So something like that. Hot area is basically true and false for you people. That is which other statement that are true and which are false that you need to figure out. Again, I would say for theoretical OTs, multiple response and hot area remains the dangerous areas because uh, in true and false, maybe more than two, three statements of true or maybe false that you need to figure out. And again, in multiple response, as I said, there could be more than one correct answers. So these are the difficult one when it comes to theoretical OTs, but for calculations, fill in the blank remains the big challenge okay so done with this all now uh let's quickly move towards a quick 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 skim of the paper as to how the paper looks like uh, uh in the examination so let's quickly look at the paper to see how it looks like so for that let's open up uh, one of the specimen exam maybe uh, or if not this specimen let's open any attempt question i'm sure you people are very much familiar with this testing platform provided by acca to you people uh, this is you know very important for you you have to really keep a very close eye on this now you can see here, uh, I'll just quickly give you the quick idea, will not waste too much time on this. You can see section A, 15 objective test questions, uh, section B, three OT cases, each containing a scenario and have five OTs. Uh, then section C, constructive response. The name is constructive response, which means you will construct the response by yourself, right? And this requires the skills of Excel. Uh, Microsoft Excel will work here, spreadsheet and Word, Microsoft Word or Word processing sheet. Okay, so that's for 40 marks. Now, uh, you once you begin your exam, section A will be the first one where you can see the different type of questions coming in front of you. A very good option is of Navigator, which allows you to jump from one question to the other one. Uh, so you can, you know, move very easily during the exam. There is an option of flag for review here as well. If you're not certain about this question, you're not clear about the question, you need to come back to review the question again, even if you've solved the question. So you just click your flag for review. So you'll see a flag every time in front of you like this. And this will give you a reminder. Hello, you need to come back to this one again. So section A, then you have section B uh, of your paper, where you can see a scenario on one side of the screen and the questions keep on changing the other side. The scenario re remains the same. So that's MTQ multiple, uh, uh, MTQ where you have the case studies available, right? Uh, then you have uh, section C, the giant one. You can see section C is here. Uh, where you will, yeah, this is very important. You know, you need to scroll the windows because if you don't, uh, you cannot move to the next stream, and this really wastes your time in the paper. So you can see here uh, the question on one side of the screen, and on the second side, you can see uh, this uh, spreadsheet available uh, for questions that are calculation based. And then when you do next, you can see again the same scenario on one side with word processing sheet for the typing of the answers. So this is how your paper is structured uh, when it comes to CBE exams. And I'm sure many of you already are, are familiar with this. If you still are not, ACCA has given you this practice platform for the practice purpose. Coming back to the uh, slides, we have seen the original CBE paper of 100 marks. Now coming towards the passing ratio. So passing ratio. Hmm. Everybody, are you with me? Come on, say yes or no. Let me look at the chat box, how active people are. Respond quickly. Are you all with me? Yes or no? 
Right, you are with me. That's excellent. I need people to respond very fast, okay? Very, very, very fast. Right. Great, great. So, if you look at the passing ratio, it's like a roller coaster. Enjoy roller coaster. So, going up, down, then up, then up, then up, then down. So, if you see here, uh, last eight attempts, so it was highest in, 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 in March 21. I can see your message, Salar. I can see your message, okay? Don't worry. So, it was 44% in March 21. And then came down to 41%. Not very big fall, I would say. But if I compare that uh, from previous attempt, there is a three points decline. And there was no attempt conducted last year for the comparative. But if I compare with June 19, because June 20 was all COVID, if you remember. So exams did canceled. So uh, if you compare with July, uh, sorry, June 19. So you can see from June 19, there is a better passing ratio of June 21. Uh, but again, I would say uh, still there is a very good room to improve the passing ratio. And this time we will work together to improve it. Are you with me? Say yes. Now, coming towards the uh, next two weeks plan, what to do here. So first of all, attend all five days. Come on, tell me how many of you will attend all five days? How many of you will attend all five days? I need answers from all 233 students here. Right, great, perfect. That's the energy. If you are with me, I will give 200% for you people. I need motivation. Right. Perfect. Okay. Second, you have to follow my million dollar plan. I will share million dollar plan at the end of each webinar day through my WhatsApp group. So again, those who have joined late today, a quick, a quick uh, reminder. This is my number at the bottom. Send me a quick WhatsApp message if you are not part of my groups i'll add you in the global community groups of performance management and at the end of the webinar day i'll send you uh, the million dollar plan and that will be a nightmare and a game changer for you to be honest okay that will really be useful for you people so just send me a whatsapp so that you're part of the group then attend the grand revision <clears throat> what is grand revision i will announce it's a it's a free grand revision for you people. Uh, I will conduct this grand revision for you people and will give you extra support after the webinar uh, of these five days. I will conduct a revision and that will just be for you people. So everybody be with me in that as well. After that, I will also tell you certain chapters to read from the book. Okay, so the book that I'm recommending is BPP book. Okay, it's the BBP book and uh, you have to read certain chapters from this book. So I will tell you the names of the chapter through the index, but not today in the coming days. Okay. Attempt mock and get it checked by expert PM tutor is really important. It's really important that mock is the success for you people. So make sure that you solve mock. Now, if you have some instructor available at your end, you can ask them to check your mock because it will give you a big idea where you went wrong. It gives you an idea of time management. All of you who are listening to me right now, listen, mock is very, 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 very important for your success. Don't take it lightly, okay? So uh, I, I will be offering this mock package uh, if anybody is instruct in interested in these mocks, so do let me know. You can WhatsApp me again in the group. I'll share the details. Though these are paid ones, this is a paid package. But yes, if you want to be part of this, you want to be assessed. So I'm there and I will help you in that case. So those who are interested, please 
just WhatsApp me uh, on my number and also I'll share the details on the WhatsApp group. Now, scope of the webinar will be what? It will be 30% knowledge-based webinar, 70% practice-based webinar. So focus will be a lot in practice case, right? I will focus on section A and B OTs and section C constructive response. I will use ACC platform as well. We'll focus on drafting skills a lot because that's the biggest weakness of many of the students that they cannot draft the answers. Especially those who are coming from F2 paper, they are not very much trained as to how to draft the answer. So Rezwan Mania has the answer to that, okay? And I'll try to cover up that in today's session as well. So yes, please be with me. <clears throat> now, after this, the webinar day wise plan. Today is budgets. Tomorrow it's variances. Day three, very key one, the heart of F5, the heart of performance management. And this is performance measurement section. If you want to pass, you want to pass in this one. You have to pass in this section if you want to pass the paper. So this is third day, day three. Note it down. Make sure you don't miss it. Though each and every day is very important, but this is the most crucial one. Okay. Then decision making is what we'll be targeting further. Then advanced costing technique and the new syllabus areas. Every September, uh, you will see a slight revision in your ACCA syllabus. Okay. Every September, there is a slight uh, revision in your syllabus, not very much. Now, people really get concerned about these and they really uh you know they really get tensed about it so i am saying that don't be tensed about this it's a normal small change with few additions so don't be tensed about it i will cover these in the last day of the webinar okay so last day fifth day note down again new syllabus changes will be covered right great now tip of the day every day I'll give you a small gift, and that will be a tip from my side. So you want the tips? Yes, everyone. Do you want the tips? Yes, you want tips, right? So the tip for today is <laughs> find easy marks. There's one mania. Best technique to pass is easy marks. Sir, are there any easy marks in the paper? Yes, lots of easy marks. You, you just need to learn how to search the easy marks, right? So I'll tell you where are those easy pickings. Time management means that first attempt easy OTs or easy CRQs. So how do we know the OTs are easy or not? So obviously, when you start reading the OTs, the small section A OTs, you get to know, okay, this seems manageable. So you can spend time on just reading it. You realize that is workable. Solve it then and there. You think it's difficult, leave it and move on. So what about CRQs? My friends, there are requirements given in the CRQ. Now, if you saw, if you read the requirement first and you realize that this is a variance question and variance is something i'm really expert in variance is my favorite area i know how to work out mixed variance and yield variance stop there solve that question so if you are solving areas in which you are good areas which are your strength you will gain the confidence in the paper never never start with a difficult question now if you all like cricket cricket is a very famous game in asia pakistan india so if you watch cricket you if you are a batsman at the crease do you want to face easy ballers first to gain the confidence or the most difficult ballers easy or difficult i'm not getting the answers i want quick responses you have to talk to me you have to interact with me 
This is not a webinar where it's one way traffic. Easy, right? So why you prefer easy? Because you want to gain the confidence. You want to play as many as shots before you face the difficult one. So why not apply the same rule in examination? So I hope you like my tip for today. Friends, today's topic, let's start with the today's agenda and that's budgeting. Now, people are really afraid of budgets because budget is one area where lots and lots and lots of theory is tested. So for you people, I prepared a really good analysis which will actually show you budget and the theory and the calculation tested so far. So here it is. Budget has been tested one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Budget has been tested eight times in your examination. The questions that are visible to us, the question that ACC has disclosed so far. So eight times it is tested. And in these eight times, if you observe, theory has been tested for 109 marks, whereas calculations has been tested for 38 marks, which means 75% theory has been tested compared to calculation. Wow, that's analysis. And I teach on the basis of the analysis, whatever ACCA prefers, whatever examiner prefers, is what Rezwan Mania prefers. So this means a wise student will never neglect calculation in budgets. No, I'm never saying that. But a wise student will definitely work hard when it comes to theory in the budgets. Because budget is the only, only, only section, mark my words, that has the capability to be tested for 20 marks theory in C or Q. And there are lots of examples of that. You can see here, 20 mark theory, 15 mark theory. There are lots of examples, 20 mark theory. So yes, and whenever calculation did came, you can see very small weightage of the calculation was tested, which making things really clear that you need to be good in theory. So Rizwan Mania will try his best today to just match your level to teach you how to draft theory. And I'm sure at day end, before you leave, you will give me feedback. Did the techniques help you to improve or not? Right? Great. So let me look at the chat box. It's very busy chat box. Uh, there are certain questions, but not very much subject related. I can answer one, Gulnas. Uh, this is my WhatsApp number at below of the slide. You can see I've just circled that. You send me a quick WhatsApp message at this number. And later on, I will add you in the WhatsApp group uh, so that you can be part of Rizban Mania support group till the exams, okay? Right. Done with this one. Today's topic. Activity-based budgets, a, a huge request I received few days back, even today when I was asking students in the WhatsApp group, because my way of teaching is that I do ask people what you want me to teach. And this is what I'm going to do the next five days as well, okay? I will ask you the difficult topics, the topics you want me to teach and make it easy for you. I'm ready for that. So today... I got a huge voting for activity-based budgeting. And yes, it's true, to be honest, because activity-based budget is one area which is not very much tested in the paper. I mean to say it's a new topic and haven't been tested too much. It did came in the examination previously, but because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of practice, because of lack of past papers, students were not very much comfortable with this area. So I'll spend few minutes of today's session on this activity-based budgeting 
followed by a twin 10 mark question that we'll start with okay then i will move towards one of the hottest topic is rolling budgets always very important like incremental and zero based are important so this is also a very important topic i've covered incremental zero based in my previous uh june 21 webinar so i don't want to repeat that uh but that will be part of my million dollar plan but right now today i will be focusing secondly on rolling budgets okay then we'll do a section c question then provided time allows today i will give you a brush up in knowledge for the budget system the theory where this was the third uh, most uh, required topic that students uh, did message me on the whatsapp group and followed by section a practice question if time allows right so this is the agenda i hope you like my plan what do you think will this be useful say yes or no Sayyid Muhammad Taha, it's too early to ask which one, which section you should order, uh, you, which you attempt first. I'll give you lots of uh, tips and let's keep this for the fifth day, okay? Right, great. So section B is what I'm targeting first, but before that, uh, <clears throat> I will first give you a quick idea about what are uh, active, what is activity-based budget. First of all, you need to know that there are types of budgets in your PM syllabus by the name of fixed budget, flexible budget, incremental budget, zero-based budget, and rolling budget and activity-based budget. Entire teaching strategy for these five days will be that first I will give you a recap of a topic that we will be solving, uh, for that we'll be solving a question so that you get to grip the basic knowledge first and then we'll move towards the question because that will give you a really good opportunity to implement or apply what you have learned i hope you will like my technique right uh mehru Esan, this is the chat box where you're writing so don't worry i can see your comments okay you are in the right place so the first is a fixed budget which is prepared at a single activity level okay and once you have made it you don't change that then you have a flexible budget which is prepared at the end of the year and you compare this with the actual results then you have incremental budget the basic point for this is this starts from the previous period actual result or previous period budget in which you just incorporate known changes and inflation this budget is suitable in stable conditions zero based budget totally opposite of incremental which starts from a base of zero in which everything needs to be justified right from the scratch this is a budget where you don't want to rely on the past figures and you start the budgeting activity from scratch. Rolling budget are today's topic. I'll discuss this later on. Activity-based budget is my current budget right now. So let's first discuss what is activity-based budget. Here, I will take a small, uh, I'll take a small break when it comes to activity-based budget. And first I will, uh, write about a technique which you are very much familiar is known as activity based costing okay activity based costing okay those who are thinking when i will give a break so don't worry i will give you a break uh, uh i'll give you the rest time so chill i will decide and will give you the break in the right at the right time okay okay so activity-based budgeting uh before i start with activity-based budget you need to keep in your mind muhammad zain what is your question man you're just writing please reply please reply please reply what to reply okay <clears throat> so activity-based budget basically is something that you can relate with activity-based costing Right now, I'm not teaching you activity-based costing, but just give you, giving you a quick idea 
that activity based costing is a technique through which you absorb the overheads into product cost a quick idea activity based costing breaks the overheads into cost pools if you remember the cost pools this cost pool example includes setup is a cost pool this is an activity actually cost pool is known as an activity so setup is an activity material handling is an activity inspection is an activity dispatching is an activity delivery is an activity so what is say it says break the overheads into cost pools or the activities like setup inspection and for these cost pools determine a realistic cost driver i'm sure you have heard this word cost driver is what it's an activity level you can even call this as an activity level so cost driver so cost pool and cost driver and then it works out the oar overhead absorption rate and then absorb the overheads into product cost <clears throat> right now we are not learning how to absorb right now we are learning that okay the activities which abc will determine the activity which, which abc will determine like inspection like material handling like dispatching for these activities we will learn how to make the budgets for these activities so i've made it really clear the activities which abc is using for absorbing the overheads what we are doing here is we will learn how to prepare budgets for these activities that's it so if someone asks you what is activity based budget so in return you will say we are preparing budgets for these activities and that's activity based budgets right so in short what is what is activity based budgeting come on tell me activity based budgeting is preparing budgets for the activities right perfect so let me tell you let me tell you it does uses the information given by abc okay like the cost pools and the cost drivers so it does use the information used given by abc and prepares the budget so budgeting approach in which budgets are made for each overhead activity right I'll come to the advantage and drawbacks later on and right now it's time to quickly move towards a question and learn how to make the budgets. Are you all ready? Say yes or no. So yes, people are with me, ready, all set to start. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, my voice did lag for two, three minutes. That's maybe due to a small, you know, uh, internet issue. I think it's all fine right now. Okay, that's great. So, friends, <clears throat> let's begin with this first section B question. Okay, now, section B. Is it a section B question? Yes, this is a section B question. And uh, before I proceed, some tips I need to give you for section B. First of all, let me tell you examiner feedback. The feedback is examiner says that students basically do not read the scenario actively. Okay. Uh, why I'm saying this is because there is a scenario given which we'll soon which soon we'll read here. Because students are not reading the scenario actively what happens is that when they are solving the ot's they cannot relate that with the mtq and when they cannot relate that with mtq what happens is that they go for the wrong options and those wrong options again results in 
your marks you know going down so the point here i want to make is that reading of the scenario is extremely important and when you are solving the ot's of section b keep this in your mind that these are linked with the scenario you don't have to consider these in isolation never 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 possible that you have to consider this in isolation right so that's it clear second be able to apply knowledge of theories and techniques to the scenario given which i already mentioned rounding off mistakes for fill in the blank questions rounding off mistakes we must learn what nearest thousands and nearest millions actually mean okay so i'll also cover up once we will look at the questions that are calculated once so these are the tips for section b read the scenario and when you're solving ot's relate those with the scenario that's really important right so let's begin triple b limited is planning to make budgets for each of their warehouse activities okay so how many activities do they have in a warehouse number one it's material receiving and number two issuing deliveries following information will be useful for preparing budgets estimated numbers of activity levels so what they have done is that they have estimated the activity levels that is cost drivers that is in the coming year they expect that number of times material received activity will be conducted 5000 times so 5000 times you will receive the material number of deliveries number of deliveries will be 4000 okay so it's a budgeted information then the budgeted resources consumption and their associated cost is now the word resources is very important to keep in your mind listen everyone when you are preparing an activity based budget you have to keep in your mind that activities like the one they are mentioned here receiving deliveries uh the first activity name is okay receiving materials and issuing deliveries now you receive material from supplier and you issue that material uh, to your other departments or maybe to the customer whatever it is you need to keep this in your mind that to perform these activities you will be using the resources are you all with me right you'll be using the resources so what do i mean to say by resource what exactly is a resource so i would say labor is a resource manpower is a resource people who are working there are the resource so these are the people who are working there are basically your resources so whoever is working there like your workers your supervisors and all do you think will they charge you for that or they will give you a free service come on what do you think they will they charge you yes they will charge you come on you have to reply me in the chat box okay so will they charge you they will they are not your relatives even if they are your relatives they will charge you for that right so if they will charge you for that so that results in a cost for you okay so now what exactly i'm doing here is i will see that how many resources will be used and what is the cost of that or i would say what will be the cost of that because it's all future based it's all budgeted so what will be the cost of those resources and considering the consumption the activity is doing of the resource I will allocate the cost to those activities. Now, do you agree with me on this point? If you are using the resource up to 60%, so should I charge you the cost of that consumption up to 60%? Say yes or no. Yes, people are replying me, but in very small numbers. Everyone, come on. If you will remain active, with me i'm telling you you will pass the exam okay so be active so the point i'm making here is yes 
definitely so if you will charge that respective percentage to that respective activity you know what are you doing you are making a budget what are you doing you are making a budget that's it so allocation of the expected cost to an activity is basically doing budgeting for the activities wow that's so straightforward let's actually rehearse this and see the budgeted resource consumption and their associated cost is given to you where you can see resource number one is workers supervisor and their expenses the amounts are given to you here with their consumptions very clearly mentioned as well okay so the first question of ot is and that's mtq scenario based there will be five questions is calculate the budgeted cost of receiving material and issuing deliveries so now i'm teaching you how to make a budget so be with me while i'm solving this i will quickly tell you the budgets that i'm making here so i'll make a budget for receiving material and issuing deliveries okay how will i do this i look at the workers wages first workers wages 60 percent is consumed by the material receiving which means that uh, 10,000 into 60 percent is how much 6,000 for issuing 10,000 into 40 percent is how much 4,000 okay simple supervisor cost 50,000 will be the budgeted cost of the supervisor 70% of the time of supervisor will be you know uh, consumed in receiving and 30% for deliveries so 50,000 into 70% and 50,000 into 30% okay so let's use the calculator here uh, it's 50,000. Can any one of you tell me before I calculate? I can't see 35,000, right? And the remaining 15, 30% is 15,000. Perfect. Now, this is the budgeting that we are doing, okay? Then what we have is other expenses. Let's do the allocation of that as well. 10,000 into 10%. 1000 here 10000 into 90% 9000 right so right done clear so what you have here is 6000 plus 35000 plus 1000 and the total budgeted cost for receiving material is how much it's 42000 okay clear for issuing deliveries how much is the figure can anyone quickly tell me 28000 right clear done so the first part is 42,000, fill in the blank. This one, 22,000. Did you understood? This is the budgeting that you have to do in activity-based budgets. What you have to look here, you just have to see that how much is the consumption of each and every activity, consumption of a resource I'm talking about for each and every activity, and just charge that proportion to that activity and just sum up that and that's the budget so the expected budgeted figure for receiving material will be 42000 and for issuing deliveries will be 28000 okay my friends my friends i'm i'm requesting you people to ask as many questions as you want to don't be afraid to ask questions if you are struggling with anything, I will answer you. 
I will be with you till the last day of your paper, and that's my promise. Those who already know me before, they will give this surety that what I'm saying is right, okay? So please, please, you ask questions, whatever you want to. Okay, so I have a question here from Irfa Shah. Uh, why we are not multiplying 42,000 with 5,000? 42,000 with 5,000. Why should I multiply that? I can't understand your question. The only thing I had to do was to prepare budgets. So I looked at the simple consumption made by the activities and based on those consumption, I'll just attribute the costs. Sayyid Vajahad, it's too early to ask this question. Please just hold on. I will guide you the important topics for section A, B, and C and everything, okay? If they are per unit, so you even need to work out per unit. You need to look at the consumption per unit, okay? Uh, and for example, two hours will be required and the cost per hour is, for example, $4. So like this also you can work out for per unit. Okay, I'll tell you later on why didn't we consider the activity levels, right? So listen, <clears throat> done. On the basis of resource consumption that is expected, you will simply allocate the cost. And that's what I've done. Now, just to give you a quick idea, what complication can further come in your paper? Do you want to know that complication? For example, for example, what complication can come in your exam? This is just an imaginary thing I'm telling you. For example, there could be a possibility that in the paper, maybe, 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 they give you a different sort of an information. Like for example, for example, if they say that uh, our workers will work for uh, maybe let's suppose 2000 hours, okay? We'll work for 2000 hours on receiving material, right? And they charge us three per hour. They charge us three per hour. So will that be difficult for you in the paper? Tell me, yes or no? Will that be difficult for you? Come on, say yes or no, no. That is also a possibility that could come in your exam where you can easily handle a situation like this in the paper, like 2000 hours are given to you. That is, that's the resource consumption expected and the rate per hour that you're gonna pay. So like this also, you can work out this 6,000, okay? So be prepared for anything like this can also come in your exam. Okay, Mohammed Saad Ali. I will share all the slides that I'm showing you here through my WhatsApp groups, okay? The groups that I'm talking about, you all must be part of that group. Uh, so I'll share things on that, uh, so through that group, right? Okay, so I think that's clear. Understood, this could be a possibility that can come in the paper. Let's move on now. The next question says, calculate the overhead cost per activity, per activity for receiving materials and for issuing deliveries. So now what are you supposed to do in this one? You have to work out the overhead cost per activity. So this is a budgeted cost for you, the budget that you have prepared, right? Now, if you look in the question, they gave you the estimated activity that you will consume, okay? And that's the uh, expected, that for example, there will be 5,000 material, 5,000 times material will be received and 4,000 times deliveries will be made, right? So now what you're gonna do is, you will divide this 5,000 and 4,000 activities, okay? And you will work out the cost per activity. Let me quickly check, is, is this five and four, yeah? 
So you will work out the cost per activity. So 42,000 divided by 5,000 gives you 8.4 as your answer per material. Okay, per material received. Where is the rubber? Yeah. Oh man, it's not working. Okay, that's great. So per material received, the cost is 8.4. And for this one, it's 28,000 divided by 4,000 is seven per delivery. Okay, so that's the budgeted cost per activity. So can you tell me, any one of you, let me see first, pe first 10 people who will respond me. Let me check first 10 people who will respond me. This is similar to what? Anything that you have covered before. This is similar to what? Can any one of you? Any 10, first 10 people. So here we are. Yeah, great. First 10. OAR. It's similar to what you call OAR. This is overhead absorption rate that you work out for ABC costing absorption. Okay. So this is simple, that same OAR, right, that you worked out. So I hope this is clear. Done. Done. Let's move on. After the year end, the actual cost of issuing deliveries, one of the activities, was 35,000 for actual deliveries of 4,500, okay? Calculate the variance based using actual information for issue deliveries, okay? I need to work out the variance. Now, let me tell you here, let me tell you here. Yeah, budgeted costs per activity, cost pool per activity, okay, Omar? Now, Why you prepare a budget? Everybody, you need to be with me, okay? Why you prepare a budget? We prepare a budget to control the cost. Is that is that the reason? So here you are preparing a budget to control the budget, to control the cost of an activity. And one way to control is to compare the cost that you you should have incurred compared to what is incurred, which means I will compare the actual cost of 35,000, okay? And this was for 4,500 actual deliveries with the, okay, flexed costs. Now, the comparison should always be like with like, and that's what flexible budget is. Flexible budget is a one that is useful for comparing like with like. It's useful for comparing things like with like. So I will compare this with the cost that should have been, and what's that? For actual deliveries of 4,500, what should be the cost? So as you see here, seven is the cost per delivery. So what I'll do is 4,500 into seven will be how much? So let's have a look here. 4,500 into seven. Before I do calculation, let me see who is responding. It's 31,500, right? 31,500, which means that the cost for 4,500 deliveries should have been 31,500, but in actual, the cost of 4,500 is 35,000. So is it a like with like comparison? Yes, it is. For 4,500, the cost should have been 31,500, but it did cost. 35,000. It should cost 31,000 and it did cost 35,000. 
31,500 it should cost. So are you getting a difference here? A variance here? Yes or no? Yes, you are getting a variance of how much? 3,500. Come on, guys. Is it favorable or adverse? Is it favorable or adverse? Quickly, 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 quickly. We don't have time. It's adverse or favorable? It's adverse, which means the cost should have been 31,500, but it is 35,000. For 4,500 deliveries, more cost was incurred compared to the expected flexed cost. So it's an adverse situation and there is a room for you now to control the cost for the next time. You have to see why your cost went up compared to the flexed cost. That's the purpose of activity-based budgets. Hmm. Are you getting my point? Okay. Just wait, Isha Naveed, just wait. I'm using an example here to teach you. Let me tell you honestly, we haven't seen any past paper question that examiner has made it uh, clear in, in uh, the exam portal. Uh, and that's, a, that's an unfortunate thing, to be honest. Despite the fact I'm giving you the concept and the knowledge so that you get to know, okay? So I'm still doing a very good job, I would say here, okay? No. Next, remember comparison. Areej Khan, comparison is always like with like. Let me tell you one more thing. If you can just keep in your mind the variances that you solve, okay? All those variances are also like with like, where you take actual units to see how much is the cost for actual units and what should have been. So, always this is like with like. Okay? Clear? Yeah, again, always it's flexed against actual. Ganga, you are up to the mark. Flexed cost means that based on actual units, standard cost based on actual units. Okay, if you see here, this was the budgeted cost per delivery. So as per the budget, the cost per delivery is of seven. So for actual 4,500, it should have been 31,500. And that is what we say like with like, okay? And what is like with like? That is for 4,500, the cost should have been 31,500 as per the budget, but it is 35,000. So that's where the cost is more. Okay. I hope this is clear. Done. Through. Understood. Say yes or no. Great. Now, we have to control this. So let's see how to control. We have seen that we will control this. So let's see the advantages of the workings. Listen, this budget focuses on activities. Perfect. Understood. This budget focuses on activities. You just saw by yourself, it is focusing on the activities like receiving, handling, making the budgets. Okay. By focusing on activities, what happens? It provides an opportunity to control the overheads. Okay. Now, as you saw, as you saw that your cost went up. Okay. So now you will think of the measures to control the cost. Right. You will think of the measures to control the cost. So, yes, it provides you an opportunity to control the overheads by controlling the activity levels. Right. So this is the advantage of activity based budgets. Right. Uh, Solomon flexed and flexible are same flexed and flexible are same. OK. Third useful in TQM environment. What is TQM? TQM is total quality management. Everyone be with me. TQM is total quality management. So it is useful in TQM environment which means if you have heard about TQM, which says that product should be zero defected. There will be no defect in the product. Okay. It says there will be no defect in the product. So it's useful in TQM environment because you are looking at the activities, which means 
by looking at the activities you exactly know that what is the consumption made by the activity and there will be no wastage involved in that so tqm basically says no defect which means it says no wastage there should be no wastage there should be no defect so by focusing on activities like this you will control the cost and there will be no unnecessary cost being incurred because you are focusing on the activity and its consumption so if there is any wastage sort of a thing you will try to reduce that which means it is useful in a tqm environment which also believes in zero wastage okay so it's an advantage as you just saw here and this advantage is of activity based budget so can, tell me do you want do you want to learn this advantage should i make it easy for you how to learn it say yes or no yes if you want to learn this so see there is a mnemonic for you people c a t cat cat remember loved it yeah so cat yeah sayed mohammed taha you are right tqm believes in ideal standard okay yeah sayed mohammed i just replied your question here right so <clears throat> that's great now this advantage is the biggest and the most heaviest one this is costly because billions of rupees relates to overheads overheads are of billions and billions of rupees so you have to break the overheads into cost pools so many cost pools and you have to make the budgets for so many cost pools so this will be costly will be time consuming because you have to prepare budget for each activity so if there are so huge significant overheads breaking those into cost pools and then finding out the budgets and preparing budgets for that definitely will be time consuming okay done okay so let's apply our knowledge that we have just learned again going to the questions so let's solve the theory based ot's quickly are you with me please answer cat uh, sayed mohammed hasan that's a mnemonic c for control okay let me tell you c for control here a for activity here and t for tqm okay right come on tell me the right answers which of the following statements are true regarding activity based budgeting now when you are solving question like this so do look what you want to find so you do find a true one let's see the cost determined using activity based costing are used as a basis for preparing budgets come on say quickly yes or no yes this is true because i did mention earlier it uses the basis used by abc yes that's perfectly fine second the abb the aim of abb is to control the number of units output rather than cost themselves true or false this is false no the the focus of abb is to control the overhead cost by activity levels by reducing the activity levels so the focus is on activity levels not the number of units output right clear this means the correct answer is a theory going with calculation loving everyone great second question 5 quickly come on i need answers from you people you have just 30 seconds then i'll give you a quick tip here for section b which of the following statements regarding the drawbacks of abb are true drawbacks is or are true which means there could be more than one drawbacks is or are true more than one drawback 
it is not useful it is not always useful or applicable as in short term many overhead costs are not controllable and they do not vary directly with changes in the volume of activity for the cost driver abb will not be able to provide useful information for tqm program now let's do one thing here <clears throat> let's take our first break and along with that i am giving you 30 seconds to think about the answer we'll take a short break now because it's the time for a break so i'll take a 5 minute break but in this break you refresh yourself don't leave think about the answer once i come back from the break i'll tell you the answer we'll give you a good tip and we'll move to the next topic so right now it's 8 32 here we'll resume the class at 8 37 be with me think about the answer see you at 8 37 
Okay, everyone, we are back. So let's continue and let's start again from where we were. <clears throat> As I mentioned, now let's see how many of you found out the answers. Let me check the chat box uh, to see what are your answers. Okay, very few answers, disappointing. Now, it's always, it's not always useful for, useful or applicable, as in short term, many overheads are not controllable and do not vary directly with the changes in volume of activity for cost driver. So just keep this in your mind, that this question did mention that you were focusing on cost drivers, right? And activity-based costing or our activity-based budgets. Now, what they say that uh, overheads in long run are related to the activities. For example, if number of receiving deliveries will increase, okay, if the receiving deliveries will increase, so this will result in increase in the activity cost. If number of issues are going down, so this will result in a reduction in the cost. So the point is that this OT is, the first OT is correct in saying that all the overheads are not perfectly related to the activity levels, okay? And if they are not, then you can't take the benefit of that or you can't control the cost, right? So this is totally correct, no issues at all. Second, ABB will not be able to provide useful information for TQM. That's totally wrong because you know CAT. The T of CAT says that. The T of CAT says that what? The T of CAT says that. Yes, you will take the benefit of uh, ABB for TQM. Right? Clear? So that's okay. Uh, we are done with this first OT for today. You have any questions, just put up here. We are done with the first one. Just shut the camera, change the battery, keep it open. Okay, first one, first one I did said, listen, listen, activity-based budget basically says that overheads are related to activity levels. The more the activity levels, which means the more the receiving deliveries, the more will be the cost of uh, receiving in long run, right? You are getting my point? So it says that it, it is not always useful or applicable, which means there is a possibility that it might not be useful every time because in short run, in short run overheads and the activity relationship may not be there, okay? Are you getting my point? So there is a possibility in short run because overheads, if kind of a, fixed one, so in short run, they does not relate to the activity levels. In long run, everything is related to activity levels, right? In long run, uh, the more the over, the more the activity, the more will be the overhead cost. But in short run, there is a chance that overheads are of that nature that it doesn't relate to the activity levels. And if it, that is the case, so you can't use activity-based costing and that will not provide you much benefit because if, uh these are not related to that so you can't make it useful for controlling the cost okay for example you are paying a salary to a supervisor okay so in short term that remains the same for example if you guaranteed the supervisor that will make your payment for maybe three weeks okay so in that case it's sort of a guarantee right so i hope this is clear the example Okay, done. So guys, are we done everyone? Good to move. Okay, what's the difference between ABB and ABC? Obed, ABB is a technique through which you absorb the overheads into product costs. It's an absorption technique, okay? And ABB prepares budgets for those activities. So let me make it summarize for you. Summarize for you. And what's that? Using activity, you absorb the overheads. That's a activity-based costing, okay? And on the basis of, or oh, and and for these activities, when you prepare the budgets, that is ABB, okay? So 
the last thing again i will tell you here is that it's first the budgets you make for these activities so listen the last thing very important one it's the budgets that you first make for these activities see this is the budgeting that you have done so it's the budget first you make for these activities and on the basis of these budgeted figures you absorb the overhead into product costs so first you prepare the budgets for setup for inspection for material handling and on the basis of these budgeted figures you know the oer right this is what i worked out so on the basis of these oer you absorb the overhead costs into product for the pricing purpose got it so i made this really clear to you people good to go okay so the my so my last statement was really important that it's the first budgets we make and then we use uh, these activities to absorb the overheads you will see my video don't worry come on just focus on my voice please so after this it's time to move towards second budget and that is rolling budget and then we'll start with a question where we will definitely be targeting the theory and the calculation both right so guys up till now the first half is going good are you understanding the way i'm covering up the things are you happy say yes or no everybody should be active we want to pass in september 21 okay and i want you to work hard right rolling budgets useful in dynamic conditions means uncertain conditions when things are changing fast in the market what do you mean by changes that is when interest rates are changing when exchange rates are changing when market demand market condition demand and supply is changing so when interest rates are changing exchange rates are changing demand and supply is changing that is uncertain situation every month things are changing the best example of this is pandemic it's covid 19 situation come on can you tell me are we certain still what will happen even though there are vaccines in the market still we are sure what's going to happen next tell me schools are closing markets are closing opening in this situation the best suited budget is rolling budget right perfect so do keep this in your mind that what we do in rolling budget a quick idea i need to give you budgets which is regularly updated by adding a further period once the previous period has expired okay now how you do it so i'll take few minutes to build up your concepts and after this i will move towards a question so just listen about the concepts first okay so let's let's use an example here for example traditionally you used to make a fixed budget right and that's for 12 months so let's assume we have made a 12 month budget and that's for 2005 right okay so your budget is for 2005 now for rolling budget what you will do the first thing is i will not repeat this again so please listen to me very carefully now okay i want to save time here the first thing you're going to do is you will look that whether the changes in the market are uh monthly or they are quarterly so first of all you will look how quickly the things are changing if the things are changing on a monthly basis so you will divide the budget into 12 months okay if the changes are quarterly which means every quarter a new announce a new announcement is done by the government about the next plan this means you will break your budget into four quarters so let's assume this this is quarterly okay so that's quarter one 
that's quarter two, that's quarter three, and that's quarter four. Okay, so you will divide this into four quarters: quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Now, what I said, if you have heard that, depending on how quickly uh, the things are changing. Okay, so it's quarterly now. Done. Moving forward. The immediate budget that you have, the quarter one. If you are standing here, so the immediate budget is quarter one. For immediate budget, you do detailed planning, detailed planning. And for the other quarters, you do planning, but that's less detailed planning, less detailed planning. Now the question is, why do do you do like this? Why detailed planning for quarter one, and why less detail for the remaining quarters? This is a very good question. Because, because you are not certain what's going to happen after every quarter. So things which you think will change, you will not fix those at the start. And you will keep a margin, you will keep a room for them. So that once that quarter comes, before that you can plan accurately. That's why you do, you do accurate planning for the immediate quarter and less detailed planning for the remaining quarters perfect 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 sir now listen once the first quarter expires i'll be quick here once the first quarter expires adding a further period once previous has expired you add another period into the budgeting system and that's quarter one for 2006 perfect perfect Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Once the first quarter expires, you'll add another quarter into the budgeting period. Done. Perfect. Happy. Okay. And next what you do. And next what you do. And then what you do is that you will do one more thing, which is you will compare the first quarter budgets with the first quarter actual results. Okay, and when you compare, you get a difference, and that is known as variance. Okay, so you get a variance. Now, in this variance, you look for the factors which are outside your control. Okay, so you look for the factors which are outside the control of the company or the management because it's something which they can't control, like inflation, they can't control, it's exchange rate, they can't control. So, you will look at the factors which resulted in the variance which were not in your control and for all those uncontrolling factors you will incorporate those into the remaining quarters so that you make all those updated okay so based on the current market condition which means based on the current announcement about the government for covid 19 for the next three months that for the next three months Okay, the first three months the markets were on. Perfect. So your forecast was according to that. Now for the next three months, your markets will not be open and you will have a semi-lockdown. So you reduce your sales targets. Perfect example, sir, is one perfect example. So we'll reduce your sales target and you will update your immediate quarter in that case. Okay, so things which are not in your control, you will incorporate those in the remaining quarters to make it up to date according to market conditions. Wow, golden words. Done. So, done with that. So, what's the next thing? Rahul, focus here. What's the next thing? The next thing is now you tell me which is the next immediate quarter? Okay, that's quarter two. So for quarter two, what are we going to do? Now for quarter two, we'll do detailed planning because quarterly things change. And for the remaining quarters, that is quarter three, quarter four, quarter one of the next year, we'll do less detailed planning. Perfect. Perfect. So is it this something that's going to repeat again and again? Yes, it is. This will repeat again and again and again. This means, can you predict now what's going to happen? Come on, tell me. Very quickly, we are ending this and moving towards a question. 
once the first quarter expires, sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon. Once the next quarter expires, that is quarter two. Once the next quarter expires, what's going to happen? Expired. Expired. You will add another quarter. Okay. You will compare quarter two budget with quarter two actual results. And those things which are outside your control based on the actual market, based on the actual market, okay? Because actual market is the best representative of the current situation. So you will incorporate those into the remaining quarters. And we'll make an updated budget. And that's the constant work you are doing by again and again and again and again and again. That's rolling budget. You make your budget updated on a regular basis. That's why we say it reduces uncertainty. It never eliminates, reduces, because you're updating according to market condition. That is why it provides you more realistic budgets. Okay? It provides you more realistic budgets. Done? Clear, everyone? More realistic budgets. Okay? Then, you need to keep this in your mind that control will be based on recent plan. Obviously, you have an updated budget, so your controlling will be done on that basis. Okay? You will do controlling on the basis of recent plan because you have an updated budget. It's not quarterly, Hassan. I did mention earlier, it depends on how quickly the things are changing. Is it, if the things are changing monthly, so Hassan will go for monthly rolling budgets, okay? So, so Mohammed Saad Ali, it depends uh, if changes you think now will remain for next two quarters, so you incorporate that. If changes you think will be quarterly, so you keep it quarterly, okay? I hope I've answered your questions here. Yeah, obviously, Atik, uh, Zubair, we do incorporate that. Right? Done? Dusted? Concept clear? Zainab, Aftab, you are asking a question in a chat box. and This is the chat box where you have to answer the, uh, ask the questions, okay? Okay, for... Yeah. Things which are outside the control and you think they are applicable for six months or eight months or nine months later on, so you incorporate that. So you incorporate until the time they are, uh, until the time you think they are applicable. Only the only the things which are not controllable, obviously, because controllable thing is something that management needs to control by themselves. For mock, I've already mentioned there's a mock package in which you need to enroll separately, okay? Again, Mohammed Zain, yes, if changes are six monthly. Okay. I hope this is clear. That's not an issue. So you can see the advantages here. Now let's move on to a past paper question. Now this time the question will be a CBE one question. That's the uh, section C done with section B. So for section C, there are certain instructions I need to give separately for section C. First of all, for section C theoretical questions, students do not understand the question requirements. I will give you a very good technique for this. That is, I will give you the technique of verb and objects through which you can easily understand the question. Candidates are struggling to use spreadsheets. So I'll teach you how to handle and use a proper format for the spreadsheet, okay? Candidates do not relate answers with scenario. That's again for theory-based one. You are not linking your drafted answers with the scenario. So again, I'll show you and give you an example of that. 
candidates are not focusing on gaining easy marks. Yes, this is very true. There are easy marks available every time. Candidates are answering what they thought they were being asked rather than what they were being asked. So you write what you want to write, not what is required. So yes, you have to keep that in mind as well. You have to write what you are supposed to write, not what you know, right? Okay, so let's begin. Here we are with a very good question of rolling budgets, which is which is which has tested not only calculation but theory as well. So stay connected, be with me. We'll target this question and we'll cover this for calculation and as well as theory. Okay. Now, first of all, the first part. So what I'll give you a tip here is once you start reading a scenario. First, read the requirements so that you get to know actually what are the key verbs in the objects. Now, I have a sh document with me today and I've shared that document with you people as well. Let me just quickly open the document once I find it. Yeah, it's a key verb document, which you can see here. I've also shared this document with you people. This is a must read document where you are given the meanings of what calculate, what are the verbs, verbs, estimate, discuss, define, briefly describe, interpret, outline, compare, identify, explain, suggest, evaluate. These are the verbs, justify, these are the verbs, okay? So my point is that you must know the difference of the verbs. It's very important that a word state is not same as the word explain. So for that, make sure you do read this document. I've shared this document. Uh, it's attached here. You can download from this go to meeting right now. And uh, if you still cannot, so I'll share in the WhatsApp group. OK, so make sure you read this document. So. Verbs are really important in the exam. Identifying verbs are really important. And remember, with each verb, there is an object connected as well. So what is an object? Object means the main thing about which you have to answer. Okay. So for that, let's do a quick rehearsal. And let's try to make your theory a bit better. Every question you read, you have to find the verbs in the objects. Now, this will not take much time, but this is a very useful activity. So, example to the verb, state, explain, discuss, compare, even calculate is a verb, even prepare is a verb, okay? Now, what to prepare, what to compare, what to discuss, what to explain, what to state, Want to make this your core area? Say yes or no. Want to be like this flying kick? Yeah, you want to be? Okay, so concentrate. So what to explain, what to compare, what to define, what to calculate, that is object. That is object. See, for example, state advantages of flexible budgets. Now, advantages is an ob is a key object or the flexible budget is a key object. So the key word for which you have to answer is not flexible budget. It's the advantage that is the object. Advantage. Key object is advantage. If you start writing about the definition of flexible budget, you are totally wasting your time. Focus should be on advantages. Making our theory stronger. Then explain what to explain. Advantages of flexible budget. Wow. So here the object is advantages of flexible budget. Again, so the focus is on advantage. Now, listen. Listen, 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 listen. The verb used in requirement not only indicate what to do 
but often how much detail to go into awesome awesome they don't they don't just tell you what to do but they also tell you in how much detail you have to go into which means the words state and explain are different with different meanings now why i'm saying this why i'm saying this listen flexible budget advantages remains the same object is same but the verb is changing which means the level of detailing will be different when you are required to state the advantages so you just have to state the advantages of a flexible budget like for example if i give you quick idea using the rolling budget example here so the advantage of rolling budgets were what it reduces uncertainty more realistic budgets are prepared because of rolling kind of with recent plan so state means you just have to state these okay but when it comes to explanation so now your focus will not be just on saying it reduces uncertainty or you will not say that it gives you more recent uh, or realistic budgets but now you have to tell why why this is an advantage for the company explain why for a particular company this is an advantage for example i'll give you a quick idea for example if things are changing fast in in a scenario in a given scenario if things are changing fast it is written that every quarter government pass a new regulation so now your answer of explanation will be that rolling budget provides a more realistic plan and then you will say which is very much relevant to the current abc company where regulations are coming every 3 months and you need to update the budget so here your answer if just restricted to rolling budget provides a realistic plan will not give you marks you will get marks when you will relate that it is a budget that will give you a realistic plan and in case of the company because things are changing fast you can update your plan every quarter yes tell the examiner why this is an advantage for the company learning this this is the difference so verb not only tells you how what to write but it also tells you how much to write and for that how much i would say you refer to the marks as well you look at the marks if marks are less so less application required if marks are more so more application required understood i hope you have i hope you have understood okay so yes this is what you have to keep in your mind so let's move on discuss steps of abc costing now tell me very quickly it's a quick fast game i'm playing with you people are you ready for the game so tell me is object core object steps or abc come on steps right compare throughput with marginal so the object is obvious we'll compare throughput with marginal object this is the object calculate what material mix variance perfect calculate material mix variance we'll calculate material mix variance understood so i hope this is clear in every question let's find out the verbs and the objects so going back to the scenario the first is a question let's quickly highlight these i don't know why whether highlighter works here or not but i think it does so let's read prepare static course rolling budget for the next four quarters so what is the verb come on reply highlight prepare is a verb 
what is the object static course rolling budget done perfect perfect move on in exam read the requirements first like this highlight verb and object and then go to the scenario because then it will make much more sense second one come on read the question discuss the problems which have occurred at static co due to previous budgeting process and the improvement which might now be seen through the use of realistic rolling budgeting come on friends figure out the verbs so let me tell you the first and the only verb is discuss discuss but how many things to discuss here so keep a very close eye on the word and 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 now what is and let's go to my million dollar techniques look for the extra requirement with the word and awesome awesome going on happy understood look for the extra requirement and so this and is giving me the idea that there is not just one object here there are more than one objects here so let's look here the first is before the and is one object and after the and is one object so discuss problems which have occurred at static code due to previous budgeting process is your first object you have to discuss the problems that they are facing due to previous budgeting process this means remember while reading the scenario there are problems mentioned if you highlight those initially your second part becomes a peanut it becomes a peanut for you <clears throat> okay so there is some budgeting process going on right now just figure out and find in the problems and what else you have to do the improvements which might now be seen through the use of rolling budgets and then you have to tell what improvements does rolling will bring in this case awesome awesome going on happy i can see happy faces here no it's a it's a crying face oh okay so improvement which might now be seen through in the use of realistic rolling budgets two objects two objects six marks are there remember according to marking scheme if you will answer just one object on an average you get half half marks for that if you just wrote about problems on an average half marks two objects 6 divided by 2 3 marks per object on on a general basis i'm telling you half marks for problems half marks for improvement if you wrote so good about the problems and you skipped improvements completely the maximum you're going to get is half marks because you missed out an object both are required so that's why my technique is amazing as mahro said here there's it's very clear that the word and is giving you the idea how things you have to break so theory is what i will grip understood perfect the third one quickly you tell me now how many verbs and objects fast perfect so discuss the problems which may be encountered discuss the problems which may be encountered when static code tries to implement the new budgeting system now the now the object is different the object says you have to tell the problems but this problem now relates to implementation of new budgeting system that is rolling budgets yeah object is also element okay done dusted clear ready so there are three things to keep in my mind i have to prepare a budget second i have to find out the problems of current budgeting system 
and what improvement rolling will bring. Now it's very clear. See, if you see the current problems in the current budgeting, okay, if there are problems in the current budgeting, so those will be overcome by rolling budget. Wow, improvements, right? And the third requirement is to think about the problems in the implementation of the new budgeting system, implementation problems of the new budgeting system. Perfect. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. Okay. So guys, be with me. I hope it, this is visible to all of you. Statico is a multinational consumer goods company. First, try to find out which current budgeting style they are using. Traditionally, the company has used fixed annual budgeting process. Okay. So they are using fixed budgets in which it sets quarterly sales revenue targets for each of its product lines. Historically, however, now you know the current budgeting. Okay. Now try to find out the problems of current budgeting here. Okay. Historically, however, if a product line fails to reach its sales revenue target, Okay. In any of the first three quarters, the company sales director and finance director simply go back. First three targets, first three quarters sales targets not achieved. So they go back and reduce the sales revenue target for the quarter just ended. Wow. To make it look like the target was achieved. Then they increase the target for the final quarter to include any shortfall in the sales from earlier target. Is this a problem? Is this a problem? Definite problem. Which means they are changing the budget so easily. If they are unable to achieve the first three quarters target, they go to the fourth, the last quarter and they make it easier. Sorry, what they do? They reduce the sales revenue targets for the quarter they send it. Yes. So all what they have not achieved, they adjust in the last quarter. Right? Done? Okay. During the last financial year ended 31st August 20x6, this practice meant that managers had to heavily discount many of their product lines in the final quarter in order to boost sales to minus increase target. Okay, now first three quarters, they are not achieving the target, right? Now what they do to adjust the uh, underachievement, they make their final quarter targets more, right? And then to achieve those, they give discounts. Discount is a cost. Even with discounts, however, they still did not reach the targets on the basis of this sales targets setting at the beginning of that year. The company had also, now listen, on the basis of the sales targets set at the beginning of the year. Now, these sales targets became the reason for a such heavy investment. The company had to also invest 6 million in new production lines in January 2006. So they thought sales will go really good. And they made a six billion investment. However, to date, this new production line still has not been used. Bad. As a result of as a result of both these factors, static saw a dramatic fall in ROI. Now you know ROI formula. What's the formula? Can anyone tell me what's the formula? It's sales, sorry, it's profit divided by investment yeah capital employed so your profit went down because of discounts because of discounts your profit went down agreed right and because of investment your capital employed went up so it's profit divided by capital employed so your profit went down because of discounts okay and your investment went up because of your investment so both numerator and denominator, both numerator and denominator adversely affected your ROS or ROI and 
push the ROI to come from 18 to 16 to 88 percent. Right? So these are the factors. Consequently, the managing director, finance director, sales director, all dismissed. Oof, that's bad. Two key members of the account department are also on sick leave due to stress and are not expected to return some week. A new MD in experience in this industry, so many problems, has been appointed and is in the process of recruiting new SD and new FD. These mistakes could have been largely avoided if company had been using rolling budgets instead of manipulating fixed targets. From now, we will be using rolling budgets, updating our budgets on a quarterly basis with immediate effect. The original flex budget for 31st August 20x7 is given to you divided into four quarters for which first quarter has just ended okay the budget was based on following assumptions number one assumptions of the budget okay to understand sales volume sales volume budget is based on assumption number one sales volume would grow by fixed compound percentage each quarter Gross profit margin, margin, margin would remain stable each quarter. It's margin. Distribution costs would remain fixed percentage of revenue each quarter. Everything is each quarter, each quarter, each quarter. I highlight this each quarter. Administration costs would be fixed each quarter. So the above budget is based on these assumptions. Okay. Let's look at the actual results for quarter one. These are the actual results. The new MD believes that the difference between the actual and budgeted sales figure for quarter one is a result of incorrect forecasting of prices. Obviously, your prices weren't, uh, were not correct in terms of forecasting. However, he is confident that the four assumptions, however, he is confident that the four assumptions, the fixed budget was based on were correct. Okay. The prices were incorrect, but the four assumptions are correct and rolling budget should still be prepared using these assumptions. Okay. So you have to use these assumptions for the rolling budget. It's now time to prepare a budget. Let's start with part A of this question. Be with me, everyone. Spreadsheet. Let's make it 200%. Okay, great. Now, <coughs> quarter one expired. So you are remain. You you are left with how many quarters? So we are left with uh, quarter two. Q two. Oh, Q two. Q3, Q4, and come on, should I add one more quarter? Yes, examiner said in examiner report, people missed out quarter one. They made just three quarters. Mistake, add one more quarter, done. What are the key things? Revenue, cost of sales, GP, Distribution cost, admin cost, operating profit. Okay. Through. Right. Perfect. Now, let's start. So, I'm preparing budgets for quarter two, three, and four and one. Now, the figures that I'll pick up here. Which figure you think will be more realistic? The actual figures will indicate of the actual market conditions or the old fixed budget figures. What's your answer? Actual. It's more representative of the market. Actual. Okay. Actual. 
perfect. So I'll start with actual. <clears throat> but now, now I'll use all these figures. That's that's fine. But because the question said that the assumptions for preparing the budget are correct and will be used in rolling budget. So I need to move toward the assumptions given here. And I have to use the assumptions for at any cost. I've used, I have to use the assumption at any cost. Okay. Right. So now let's start. Sales volume would grow by a fixed compound percentage each quarter. It says that the growth in volume will be by fixed compound percentage. Okay. It says that the growth will be by fixed compound percentage. Okay. Now, 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 how will I work out the growth? So I will work out the growth by taking the difference of two quarters because it's a budgeted assumption. So I'll use this figure and this figure to work out the percentage growth that they need to apply each quarter. Okay. So should I show the working in examination? Listen, you need to make a working area for workings and you do show the workings. So I'm working out the percentage growth. Examiner says logical workings are required. Open the cell is equals to Open a bracket, 13,694, the latest figure, minus 13,425, the old figure, divided by 13,694, I beg your pardon, 13,425, the old figure. I'm sure you are looking at my way of doing the calculations and I'm sure I will try to make things very simple for you for this paper. So let's go to this option here to show in percentage and right. So answer is 2%. Answer is 2%. Okay. So now this 2% will be applied each quarter. Each quarter. Done. So let's do it. I'll ask this question again. Should I use, should I use the revenue of actual result? Yes, which is more realistic in uncertain situation. The actual market is best in giving you the idea what is running in the market. Keep example of COVID in your mind. So it's 14,096. Okay. Multiplied by 2% growth rate. So multiplied by 1.02. Even you can link that from the working that you've done uh, below. Right? Done? Any problem? No problem. Okay. Now, next. This figure multiplied by 1.02. Okay? Done? No issues? There is one option to make things more clear for you people. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th option in your testing platform. 10th option. Okay? Right? Okay. Now you have inputted the formula here. Now you just copy this formula through control C and just paste it here. Control V. Awesome. You copy this formula and paste it here. Awesome. If you want to check, so let's check it. Quarter 4 figure, 2% incorporated. Got it? Formula copy pasted with control C and V. Done? 
done. First assumption completed. Next, gross profit margin. You know what is a gross profit margin, and what a what is a gross profit? So it's saying gross profit margin. How you work out margin? Gross profit divided by sales. It says gross profit margin would remain stable each quarter. Gross profit margin would remain same each quarter. Okay. Now, which gross profit you believe will be more realistic for you? The actual gross profit or the fixed budget gross profit margin? Margin I'm talking about. Which gross profit margin you would believe will be much realistic one in dynamic uncertain situation? Come on, give your answers. It's not fixed budget. It's actual result that is more representative of the current market situation, which means my working number two will be about the G P margin based on actual results. More realistic. How will I work out? Gross profit 5356 five, divided by revenue 14096. Let's work out. 5356 five, divided by, oh, where I am? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. 5356 five, divided by 14096. So let's work out in terms of percentage. 38%. Actual is representative of the market condition, 38%. Now listen, it says GP margin would remain stable each quarter. Each quarter. Now this is the assumption that you are following. Every quarter you have to make sure that your margin should remain 38%. So how will you work out margin? It should be 38% of sales, right? So let's do a quick working here. Let's do a quick working. Is equals to revenue 14,378, okay? Multiplied by 38%, right? 38%. Answer is 5464. Four. Okay, now here I'll tell you a good technique also. Done? Now, if I copy paste this formula and paste it here, I will not get the answer. Oh, I'm not getting the answer. I'm confused. What happened, man? Why it's not working? See, because it is not working, because it took the right revenue of C4. But obviously, the call, the, the cell changed and now the cell is C14. Instead of B14, it's C14. So should I tell you a very good technique? Say yes or no first. Do you want to learn? Say yes or no. Let me see how many yes are coming here. Not much. Not much. Okay, so many yes. So now I'm motivated to tell you. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what to do. Now what you want is, you want GP margin of 38% to remain same every time and you want to change the sales figure quarter wise. Yes, this is what you want. Yes. So what I can do, the cell that you want should not change. That's B14. Just go to that cell. And before that cell, use dollar sign. Shift, four digit on your keyboard. Button shift and four digit on a keyboard. Okay? So before B dollar sign and after B dollar sign, which means for before column dollar sign and before the row number column sign. Once you will do this, 
it will fix that cell permanently. It will fix that cell permanently. It will freeze the cell. Yes. So dollar sign before B and 14 both. Now see the magic. Ready for magic, everyone? Yes, we are. Control C the copy. Just select all the cells. Control V and you have your answers. You have your answers. Still not sure about the answers? Go to this button. Go to the 10th option to clear things for you. Perfect. I'm clapping for myself. Should I? Okay. So clear. Yeah, you can drag as well, Atik Zubair. You can drag as well. Okay. Because, but I believe using a keyboard is much easier than using a mouse in the paper. Okay. Right. Done. Yeah, yeah. This is all you can do on a platform, man. Otherwise, I would not tell you these things. Right. Done. Perfect. Now, for cost of goods sold, use a formula. Revenue minus GP will give you the cost. Agreed? Revenue minus GP will give you the cost. So that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Control C, Control V. So you have the cost here. Rounding off is not a requirement here. Decimal policies are mentioned, so don't, no, not an issue. Okay. And here I'm writing less COS. So it gives you an idea that I will deduct COS. Right. Okay. Use this 10th option, right? This, this makes things really clear. Even it will round off the stuff as well. Automatically, things will be rounded off as well. Okay. You can even represent this in a negative sign as well if you want to. So, you, you may represent this in a negative sign and that's good actually if you do it. So, to represent this in, in negative sign, you can uh, do this as well. Like from a smaller amount, deduct the greater amount so you get the answer in minus. <laughs> wow. Right? From a smaller amount, deduct the higher amount so you get all the answers in uh, minus. Okay? So, this is also possible here. Now, uh, show these in minus sign. Brackets are automatically there just because I selected this 10th option, which is a magical option. It will put negative things into bracket, will round off the stuff, and will make things really neat and tidy for you. Great. Move on. Two assumptions done. Distribution cost would remain fixed percentage of revenue each quarter. So, what do you think? Which percentage is more realistic the budgeted one or the actual result percentage check the battery of this uh, laptop okay actual perfect so just show the workings you have to show the workings percentage distribution seven o five 705 divided by sales, right? 705 divided by 14096 is giving you oh sorry, I, I just used the wrong function. Yeah, I just used the wrong function. Okay, it's 705 divided by 14096. And let's represent this in terms of percentage. So that's 5%. That's 5%. That's 5%. Okay, clear? Okay, now. It's good to use the workings in your calculations and give the reference of that. So examiner love that. Okay. So yeah, I'll do the same thing here. Again, see, I have to show this in negative because this, that's a cost for me. So what I can do is I can use negative sign deliberately here to make it negative. As you can see here, 
will select this, will multiply with 5% here, will give the reference of that, okay? And yes, will not forget to input the dollar sign to lock or freeze the cell. So I've used the negative sign deliberately, number one. Number two, I've freeze the cell here as well. Done. Let's copy this. Control C, let's paste it here. Right? So I'm sure you are confused what is happening. So don't be. Tenth option is there to help us. We are on track. Everything is going fine. So this is what spreadsheet is about. This, this is a big advantage for you people. A spreadsheet is a big, big blessing for you people. Okay. Admin cost to remain same fixed each quarter. So should I take admin cost of budgeted or actual? And, and there is a difference as well. That's 2000, that's 2020. Come on, which is more realistic one? Wow. Which is representing the current market situation? Actual, man, actual. That's rolling budget. So yes, put a negative sign, 2020. Copy, paste, and you get the answer. Okay. I hope this is clear to all of you. Right? Done? Dusted? Okay. Let's use the formula, some formula, and let's work out the final answer is equals to sum. Open the bracket. Now, that's the beauty of putting negative signs. GP minus distribution minus admin gives you operating profit. Copy. Paste. And the 10th option giving me the final profit figures as you can see here. So I hope this is very much clear to all of you. My calculations are neat and tidy without any problem. This is very much clearly covered. If you want to dress up it a bit, so you have a format option, go to the cell option, go to the borders and just put lines here. Okay, and just apply it to make it look more beautiful, right? So clear everyone. Let me show you distribution cost working. See, this is distribution cost working. Revenue multiplied by the distribution cost, 5%. I will lock this cell as you just saw and use a negative sign before this to make, to make it negative, right? That's the working. Uh, Sayyidna Batul Fatma, I hope this is clear. We, yeah, for Ubaidullah Zubair, listen, for the compound percentage growth, okay, we had to use the budget, okay? We had to use the budget because you, you were given with four quarters here. So you had to use the budget in that case. Growth rate is what you need to work out, right? So for growth rate, you need two figures, okay? Done. Clear, happy with my calculation and the linking and all. Done. Perfect. Now, let's move towards the marking scheme. Tell you where are the easy marks. You know, everything will be marked here. Look for the easy marks. Never underestimate a question. So, it's an 8 mark, 1 mark for the growth rate. Easy marks, easy marks. Okay, distribution cost that you worked out, 0.5 marks. GP margin that you worked out, 0.5 marks. What else you want in life? PM is not difficult, we are making it difficult. 
right? Even, okay, I'll come to that point after a few minutes. Now, the sales that I've worked out, one mark. Cost of sales, okay? Cost of sales that I've worked out, cost of sales that I've worked out will also be given marks for that. And one more interesting thing you will love to hear. The quarter one results that you used, the quarter one result that you used, one mark for that as well. Surprised? Understood? I hope this is making things clear for you. Now the cost of, the cost of goods sold that you worked out. One mark for that. GP margin 0.5. Distribution cost, one mark. Admin cost, one mark. Operating profit, 0.5. Wow. Everything is marked. Now, one more interesting thing for you before I move towards the next part. If you did a mistake, let's suppose in calculating the growth rate, you did a mistake here. Okay? So, there is own figure rule that is applicable in your PM paper. Everywhere, own figure rule. If you did a mistake here, one mark will be deducted. One mark will be deducted. Okay? And if one mark is deducted, so because of this wrong percentage, your revenues will be wrong. Your GP margin will be wrong. Cost of goods sold will be wrong. And your profits will be wrong. Everything will be wrong. Which means, will you lose marks for revenue, cost of goods sold, operating profit, and gross profit? Will you lose marks? No. No. Only one mark will be deducted, and the rest figures are wrong, but the workings that you have done are right. So, still you will score 7 out of 8. Still, still you will score 7 out of 8. Now, who says PM is difficult? own figure rule. Wherever there is a mistake, just deduct that mistake only and move on. So if something is difficult, leave that and move on. If something is difficult, do a, do a wrong working, use a fictitious number and move on. That's the easy mark thing. That's the technique to pass the paper. Told you, I'll tell you how to pass easy marks. If something you're not certain about, don't waste much time. It's an eight mark requirement, which means eight into 1.8 means 14 minutes you have. In 14 minutes, you have to solve this at any cost. If something is difficult, leave that and find out easy things. Distribution cost is easy. Operating profit is easy. Your formulas are marked here. If you write the right formulas, you get the marks. Wow. Understood? That's the mindset. Things are easy. Make it easy. Don't be depressed in the exam. If something is difficult, use fictitious numbers and move on. Saad, please hold on, my brother. Please hold on. It looks so bad asking a question again and again. I am coming to that. Please. The reason why I used was that the question says, sales volume would grow by a fixed percentage compared to each quarter. And why I used was, it's simple. I needed a growth in percentage, okay? I needed a growth in percentage, right? So growth in percentage means that I need two quarter figures and that's what I did, okay? So I had to use two quarter figures. 
right so my friends is the marking scheme clear to all of you and own figure rule say yes or no and remember if there is something difficult leave it and move on isha not needed use proper words look more professional i just used here but if you are short of time then it's okay Sad that depends on assumptions. Okay. I'll round. I'll come to the rounding off in OT's area where there will be two decimal, three decimal. Then I'll tell you about the rounding off. Okay. Muhammad Abdi Nasir. Okay. Happy. Happy everyone. Okay. Now let's move on. <coughs> Towards the next part, I'll solve theory here. Be with me, please. Discuss is the first verb. So just for my own ease, just for my own ease, I know things to make sure that I cover each and everything. Remember, if there are two objects to answer, it's always good to use two subheadings to tell examiner that these are the two things I've answered. Awesome. If you had to answer about the problems, so you can use a subheading. Problems in current budgeting. One subheading is this one. Okay. And second subheading is improvements. Perfect planning. Yes, you can use short paragraphs with a subheading is good. Never write in bullets. Never in bullets. Short paragraphs with subheadings is awesome for the examiner. Learn new things. Rizwan Mania is telling you million dollar techniques for calculation, for theory, for OTs, for long questions, for CRQs. Okay, done. So problems in current budgeting is the first object. Improvement is the second one. Use paragraphs for these. Not write in bullets. Okay, now let's relate with the scenario. What are the current problems in the budgets? Okay, so let's highlight the problems. We just saw a clear manipulation being done. Because of the fixed annual budgeting process, the targets is what they are changing. That's a problem. They are changing the targets. Problem one, they are changing the targets. Problem two, what happened? Scenario based. Problem two, what happened? Find the points of the scenario. Because they had to change the targets, so they did what? They had to give heavy discounts to meet the targets. Second problem. Awesome. Most easiest way. They had to give discounts. Because of this, what happened? Their profit went down. Okay. One more thing. Because that their their because their forecast was not right. Because their forecast was not right. See. Based on the sales target, based on the sales target, because their forecast was not right, they made a wrong investment as well. Wrong investment done. And that investment is not in use right now. Wrong investment done. So because of poor planning, poor forecast, they had to change the results. They had to give discounts. They had to make an investment. And because of that, their ROI went down from 16 to 8%. Problems. Yes, you have to write this. Not copy paste the things. Examiner told this in the examiner report that people were just copy pasting the thing. Who told you to do that? Write in your own words. 
but use these points. Okay. Want to know how? See, I have answer to this as well. And here I need to add one more thing. This is the question. Discuss problems. Object 1. Improvements. Object 2. Okay. Now, one more thing. Theory questions are of two types. Listen, this is another big bouncer coming up. Theory questions are of two types. One is a knowledge-based question. One is an application-based question. Another tip. If it is a knowledge-based question, if it's a knowledge-based question, so you just have to write the core book knowledge. Like, explain the advantages of the uh, AB, ABC budget or rolling budget. You just have to write simple advantages of rolling budget. That's it. Nothing more. It's a knowledge based. You don't have to link with a scenario. It's simple to write. Simple without linking you can write. But if it is an application based question, you have to link with the scenario. You have to apply the knowledge with the case. Link with the scenario. Understood? Okay. So the question that we are talking about is knowledge based or application based and how would you know it? So let's read it. Discuss the problems which had occurred at, at static co, at, at. Now this is what? Come on, tell me. Knowledge based or application based? You have to mention the problems of static company or the general ones. Sir, application based. We have to mention the problems of static company, things which are applicable in static company. That's what we have to focus on. Understood? So, this is how you figure out a question is knowledge based or application based. If the question states that you have to apply using the current scenario, it's application based. So now you have to use the material that is available in the scenario. Improving in terms of theory. Understanding the techniques. Okay. So now. Problems. The three I mentioned. It is just for my explanation that I've used bullets. But this will be in paragraph. Now for problems, you may even use two paragraphs, even one paragraph, but paragraph is important. So inaccurate sales forecast, let them make an investment in the production line. This unnecessary investment cost 6 million and ROI to drop. Okay. Inaccurate sales forecast means wrong staffing levels also done, wrong material purchased as well. This forced them to give discounts as well. And remember, once you have given discount and you have reduced your prices, then it is not easy for you to bring the prices back. Problems, scenario based in paragraphs. Okay. Clear? Done. Now the second object, improvements. How rolling budget will bring an improvement? How rolling budget will bring an improvement? How it will bring? Okay. Now if you use rolling budgets, so accurate forecast will be made. This means the problem that you had and through which you had to change your numbers would hand been if you have used rolling budget because it updates the budget on a quarterly basis. Quarterly basis. And because of that, 
करेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन वुड हैव मेड राइट सो इंप्रूवमेंट द यूज ऑफ रोलिंग बजट शुड मीन दैट डाउन टर्न इन डिमांड इज एडजस्टेड फॉर इन द फ्यूचर क्वार्टर नाउ वंस यू यू नो न that once the quarter ended now you know the things are going down so you will make your budget according to the downward market you know that there is a covid 19 impact you will alter your budget accordingly you will make realistic budget for the remaining quarters you will adjust your remaining quarters you will realistically down your budget and that helps you to produce up to date information means accurate decisions separate paragraph or paragraphs for this and for this subheadings will make it clear to the examiner that you have covered problems and you have covered improvements theory made easy for you people remember it's the examination technique that helps you to pass along with your coverage that's it rolling budget will remove would have removed all the issues so first you identified the problems and then tell okay rolling budget will overcome these problems simple <laughs> not at all an issue these problems of inaccuracy will would have been removed because you make budgets every quarterly you assess the market conditions and for uncontrollable factors you incorporate the changes into the budget right now my points are in bullets okay but once you explain in a paragraph so obviously you tell the details the one i am telling here so that's that will be okay here don't look at the bullets that's just a summary you have to elaborate it the way i'm explaining you here okay understood understood so what i've told you for every question break into verbs and the objects and for every question think whether it's application based or theory based now the second one third one come on quickly discuss the problems which may be encountered when static tries to implement new budgeting system now first tell me what is a verb discuss what is the object problems but now problems in the implementation of new budgeting system okay come on is it application based or knowledge based you have to find problems relevant to static co or the general problems of rolling budgets come on implementation problems is it application based or knowledge based it's application based no it's not knowledge based it's good to see majority are saying application based it's application based you have to find the problems of implementation relating that with the scenario okay yeah name of the company is right so what are the what are the obvious problems it's so simple you have to think about that okay i'm just giving you a quick hint now here i want you to produce an answer now i want you to learn things now you draft an answer now okay and once you draft it send the sample answer on the respective whatsapp group few hints i want to give first of all do you have an experience experienced person in the industry as an md right now no so this is this is a problem in making a realistic budget this is from the scenario it's all scenario based okay so this was just one hint i gave you 
took the point from the scenario. In experience of managing director means this will create problem in preparing realistic budgets. And furthermore, you have to find, and now this is the first homework of the first day that you draft this answer for six marks, relate things from the scenario. I just want to see how you will perform in this case. I hope this is clear to all of you. Share your answers in the group and then I will share the sample answer. Right? Right. So it's an application base for sure. I'm not showing you the answer, okay? So quickly I'll move the slide. I'll share this later on, but right now I'll not show you, okay? It's your test, it's your first assignment. Will you do it? Say yes or no. Right. So the examiner feedback, I already made it clear that many of the students used GP margin of original budget, which was wrong. You had to use the actual one. Okay. Many didn't use the quarter one figures, actual figures. That was a mistake. Second common mistake was people just made three quarters, which was wrong. Part B, many simply copy pasted the part. You can't copy paste, you have to link with the scenarios. You have to tell why this is a problem. Okay. And the third was people didn't write according to the requirement. So now link with the scenario and tell me the problems of implementation. Okay. Right. So friends, <coughs> now. This is the end of today's session and uh, here we are. I'll share a million dollar plan with you people. Okay, so do follow this plan for the topics that I want you to cover through previous webinars. So make sure you do follow that. If you're not part of my group, WhatsApp me right now so that you get the complete support. Okay, quickly before I end, how was the first session today? Did you learn new techniques, tips? How you rate the first session, please? Give your feedback to me right now. And after the session, when it's end, when the session gets ended, okay? Okay, give me your feedback. Happy. Learn new techniques. Did you find my teaching different and easier? So will you continue taking all the four sessions? Say yes or no. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Love it. Now I'll discuss transfer pricing later on. Don't worry. Now listen guys. Once the session is ended, you have to give me a small favor, please. Once the session gets ended today, after the session, you get a feedback form and that feedback is what ACCA gets it. So if you are satisfied, if you are happy, if you found my teaching different, easy, you learn new techniques. So please do share your feedback with ACCA right after the session gets ended. Will you do this? Come on guys, yes or no? Everyone, so do share your feedback with them. Do tell them how useful the session was. Stay connected. Ask your friends to join tomorrow's session. You bring one of your friend in tomorrow's session who was not part of today. If you do a good thing for others, you will be blessed. Okay. If you do help others, you will get the help from God. Okay. 
So ask other friends to join the tomorrow session. Remain connected through WhatsApp group. Thank you very much. Do share your feedback after the session with ACCA Pakistan. This is my WhatsApp number. Please send me a quick WhatsApp. Be on time tomorrow. Take care. Have a nice day. Rizwan Mania signing off from with signing off from uh, ACCA's webinar. Make sure you are in the tomorrow's session. Until then, take care. Bye.